The meaning of youth is the period of time between childhood and adulthood. But there is so much more to youth than just time. The youth in the Church of Pentecost Cyprus is aged between 13 to 35. The youth have a much greater purpose, and this is shown in Matthew 28, verses 19 to 20, where Jesus says, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of age. This is the mandate that is set upon the youth, and this is what makes us valuable not only to the church, but to society and all nations too. Being youthful means that we are full of energy and have inquisitive minds, which gives us the ability to influence, to break through and to create. Youth also represents a coming of age and a new beginning. The role we play in the church is mandated by Jesus himself. And because of this, it is important that the members of the church also represent the members of society. Humility is key in order to make the church a place that is open to all cultures. Growing up in different cultures and societies helps us as youth become easily adaptable to change. This is a great benefit because we are sensitive to different cultures and open to gaining knowledge. This positively impacts our walk with God as it becomes a very personal and special relationship. Building such a strong relationship with God makes it easier and more joyful to spread the word of God amongst those that we live with. Our community is diverse, and so the way in which we spread God's word should be just as diverse. We cannot do it alone. We need our mothers and our fathers of the church to support us in the same way that Saul supported David in his fight with Goliath. At Church of Pentecost Cyprus, we don't just talk the talk, we walk the walk. We aren't masters, but we are striving daily to achieve and accomplish what Jesus has commanded us to do. We want to make room for everyone, so we'd like to show you how we are going about achieving this. So in our attempt to build a multicultural church, we decided to use the following five questions as a guide and a framework which informs our thinking and our actions. Um, the first question for us was, who are we trying to reach? Who are we trying to reach? Um, this probably is the most important question out of them all. Then the second question for us was, once we know who we're trying to reach, where will we find them? Where will we find those people? Then the third question for us is, how will we get them in? How do we bring them to faith? How do we bring them into our fellowship and into our community? Then the fourth question for us is, when they come in, how do we keep them? How do we keep them? How do we ensure they keep coming back and they belong to this community? Then the fifth and final question for us was, how do we grow them? How do we grow them in faith um, once they come and they belong? So with all these questions answered, the next thing for us was to adapt our service and adapt, uh, make changes to the various departments to ensure that um, we walked in this framework. Once Pastor made the vision of the church clear to us, we as the social media team realized that we are the first point of access before people enter the building. The people we are trying to reach are on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. We already had a Facebook and Instagram account, so we decided to go on TikTok. We are intentional about the content we post so that we can attract these people into the building. Thank you. As ushers, we realize that we are the first people that visitors meet before entering the church building. So we decided to be both professional, but also welcoming to those entering. We did this by being intentional about the way we dress, wearing name tags, and also being welcoming to those entering. We positioned ourselves by having two people at the door, welcoming people and showing them to their seats, and then one person designated to mark attendance so that we know who has attended and who hasn't. As a collective, we made it a point to make sure we know everybody's names so that we address them by name and make them feel welcome. So to contribute to this vision as a music department, 
we decided we were to be intentional about the kind of songs that we sing. So, and even though this means getting out of our comfort zone to learn songs, even in languages that we are not used to, like in French and in Greek, we decided or we realized that it was very important to go out of our way, you know, to be diverse enough and to include everyone in the kind of songs that we sing. And so, because of this, even our prayer session is structured in a way that includes everyone. So we have a structure that is made up of, you know, um, African songs, contemporary songs, at least one of the COP team song and a general song, so that everyone can get along as we praise God together. So this has helped us a lot, and I think, yes, it's helping the church. For the secretarial team, we introduced the welcome pack, which includes the information about the church, the feedback form to which the newcomers can give us their opinion about the service, and the form to which we can capture the details. Uh, during the week, we also call the newcomers to just check up on them and ask them if they have any question and if they would like to be added into the WhatsApp group. Calling them is a way to just make them realize that they matter and as individual and we are really happy that they came to visit us into the church. So with the hospitality team, we decided to include some takeaway in the welcome pack for the new visitors. And also, we decided to cook food for the whole church once a month since there are so many students among us. Pensa started in 2019 and when we caught on on the vision at the Church of Pentecost Cyprus, we just knew that we had to step up. So we became more intentional about not just attracting African students, but finding innovative ways to diversify our community. Pensa now consists of members from various nationalities and walks of life and we've realized by simply inviting our friends to our sessions, events and field trips, we've been able to change the narrative of what church looks like. By the grace of God, the Church of Pentecost Cyprus has over 18 nationalities. So we've asked them two questions. What brought you to the church and why did you decide to stay? My name is Sandra, I come from Germany and my friend John invited me 2021 to come here and I like the church very much. I like mommy and daddy and I decide to stay here and not to go back from this church only if I would travel out but the church is very nice and then I invite everybody to come to this church. Hello my name is Benny. I'm from Democratic Republic of Congo. I got invited by a friend to come to the church. And what made me to belong to the church is because I found out that the church is a family. There is love and that I really got touched by, by that. And uh, I want to stay here. Thank you. Hello, I'm Connie. I'm from the Philippines and I, I learned about COP Cyprus from a friend and I decided to stay here because I like the teachings, I like the powerful prayers, I like the powerful worship time, and I like the different uh, programs that this church has for us in order to grow. Thank you! Hello, lovely people. My name is Maxo. I'm from Ghana. I love Church of Pentecost because Church of Pentecost have been in my heart since day one. I've been to Church of Pentecost when I was in Ghana. I love the teachings. I love the praises and worship. I love the pastor. I love the leaders in the church. And also, I just want to remain in the church forever. Hello there, what brought me to Church of Pentecost Cyprus was Pensa Cyprus and what kept me there were definitely the people and the food. Hello, my name is Bushebla Tinube, I'm from Zimbabwe. I came to COOP through a friend. What kept me here was the word, uh, the atmosphere and the people that I fellowship with. I'm Diva and I'm from Angola. 
what brought me here were my friends and what made me stay was the community atmosphere and the word. Hi, my name is Aniela and I found about the church through Instagram and what kept me in the, into the church is the people, the fellowship and all the activity that allow me to grow spiritually and learn more about God. My name is Carolina. What brought me to the church was my husband and what makes me stay in the church is the energy, commitment of the executives and the sense of belonging. Yeah, my name is Nori Maya Muna. I'm from Cameroon. Um, my sister brought me to Church of Pentecost. And actually what made me stay was the, the, the conviction that they had that I see in Church of Pentecost and the devotedness that was flowing in the church. So that is what made me stay. My name is Maria and what brought me to the church was friends uh, and what kept me in the church was the people and God. <laughs> Hello, my name is Marie Marvin Kamimbale. I'm from Burundi, Bujumbura. Um, what brought me to church is uh, I actually, I was looking for a church when I first came in Cyprus and then a friend of mine I met here was telling me about the Church of Pentecost and later I also met another one. She also told me about the Church of Pentecost and then we came together and that's how I came to church. And what kept me to church is the sermon. It's really amazing, yeah. Hi, my name is Musu and I was invited by Peter. I'm from Liberia. When I first visited, I felt welcome. When I first visited the church in February, and I felt welcome when I visited the church. What kept me in the church was the welcome that I felt. The people in the church are friendly and welcoming. And moreover, Pastor and First Lady, they are concerned and they are encouraging towards the member. Thank you. Hello, my name is Perry, and about this church, I found it by social media, by Facebook, and I'm so glad that I got this church. In this church, I have got a lot of loving, careness, and their guidance. Thank you. Hello, I am Basi Alusain Sise from Sierra Leone, Freetown. Uh, I heard about the Church of Pentecost through a friend called Tommy. Tommy is a good friend to me and when I met him at the church, I was so excited to be part of a fellowship. I decided to stay because the, the preachings are so real and it's heavenly focus. I wish to stay forever. Bye. My name is Sylvia and what brought me to the church is a friend of mine and then I went and had a look on social media and that's what brought me to the church and what kept me to the church is the vibe and God's presence. Yeah, actually um, what brought me to Church of Pentecost Cyprus, my friends, one of my friends invited me to the church. And what kept me in the church has been the word, the persistency of the word. Right word, the prayer, the services, everything, the activities, the members of the church, the pastor and the wife, they are wonderful. I enjoy the place. It's indeed a family. Thank you. Give me the old time religion, it's good for me. It was good for our fathers. It was good enough for our mothers. It is good enough for me. Since the days of David, the youth have taken the mantle of leadership. David said to Saul, 1 Samuel 17 verse 32, let no man lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. We are Saul and the army of Israel saw a giant who has been a warrior since his youth. David saw an uncircumcised Philistine. David volunteered himself. 
He didn't say Israel have a great army. Building a multicultural church is our Goliath today. We have been given the mandate to go out and possess the nations. But by the grace of God, the nations have come to us. They are in our schools, our colleges, our universities, our workplaces, and even our neighborhoods. Young people are the right people for this movement. We are smart, we are intelligent, we are young, we are vibrant, we are industrious, and we are innovative. Dear young people, don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. You are an asset, not a liability. Don't forget, Jesus' team was an all-youth team. Dear pastors, elders, deacons, fathers and mothers in the church, it is time to give the youth a chance like Saul gave to David. What would have become of the great Babylonian scholars, soothsayers, wise men, and dream interpreters if Daniel wasn't given a chance? With the support and guidance of an elder, Queen Esther saved her people. Let us arise and build the church. Queen Esther said, if I perish, I perish. Where are the Esthers of my generation? Like David, it's time to pick up our slings and bring down every Goliath. The brave three Hebrew guys, Daniel and his friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abadnigu, even when faced with death, they remained faithful. Let us arise as the Gideons of our generation. Find what you are good at in your local church. Get involved in the different departments in the church. Do not wait to be called upon to serve. The harvest is ready, but the reapers are few. Come forth, let us build the church of God together. It is our collective responsibility. Put your God-given talent to use. May the calamity that befell the ungrateful servant who did not maximize his potential not be our portions in Jesus' name. Amen.